Ladies and gentlemen, it is Thursday. It is after 3.15, and you know that means only one thing. You are now officially in the Super Sound Showcase here on WMBG, brought to you by Retro Daddio in Williamsburg. We are bringing you the best local artists ever, actually, ever. Fact. That's a fact. I'm just going to state that as fact. And we have another one of those in studio today. So I would like to welcome in Nathan Leonard. Welcome to the Super Sound Showcase. How are you doing? Good. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. So tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you get started in music? Oh, okay. So, um... Unlike last week's guest, I was not impersonating Elvis at seven years old. <laughs> do you um, have? Can you do an impersonation for us? Not really so much. No. <laughs> All right, that's um, fair. But I did. Um, uh, I, my first love was baseball, so I played baseball from like five till I was twenty-one years old. And um, as I realized I wasn't going to be a Boston Red Sox or a <laughs> St. Louis Cardinal, which stung a lot. I mean, oxygen and baseball shared its place as number one thing. As long as I could hold my breath, baseball was the most important thing on the planet. <laughs> Um, and when that didn't work out, it hurt a lot. And the guitar, a buddy of mine from uh, Christopher Newport, I came back home, went down to Florida and played ball, limped back home and finished up at CNU. A buddy in the dorms taught me how to play guitar at a time when I was kind of having that fall from baseball. And it caught me like no dad, best friend, girlfriend or anybody. It was If I was sad, I could learn a sad song. If I was mad, I could break strings. It was uh, just a uh, welcome kind of therapy and a good distraction. Um, and so then I got into it. Um, Start off with a ton of Dave Matthews songs early on, and then I got into uh, one time I wrote something myself, and I played it for my friend, and he said, did you write it down? And I was like, well, I wrote it. Why do I need to? I know it. I wrote it. Why would I write it down? And he was like, you might not always, and you're going to want to. And that kind of sparked a, like, he doesn't even know how much that meant in terms of getting me to want to do my own original tunes. And so uh, I uh, then I just started, and I probably played for like 10 years just, um, you know, at home, friends and everything, and then... In 2009, I played my first gig out and went from a couple gigs a year to now I have four between today and Saturday. Man, so you're staying busy then. Yeah, yeah, playing a lot. So a lot of artists, they have that one point where they decide that they want to go from music just being a hobby to they want to take that next leap and actually go out and perform. For you, what was kind of the catalyst for that? Was there any one moment that you were like, you know what, I think I want to actually try this out in public? Um. Well, I had a friend, uh, my wife had a friend working at a Ford's Colony golf course, and they wanted to start a Friday after five thing. And so uh, he reached out to me, and I tried it, and I liked it a lot. And the one thing I found was, always relating back to baseball, was standing in front of a microphone in front of a crowd of people is the closest thing I could find that was standing as a pitcher in the middle of the field in a big game and throwing that first pitch of a state championship game or whatever. Which um, So... It just was that same rush that I was kind of missing. And so when you're up there by your, like, musically, there's not much more naked you can be in front of people than with an acoustic guitar by yourself. There's no drums to cover up. There's no fancy electric guitar. I mean, other than acapella, it's pretty raw. And so um, when you hit the wrong note, you know who did it. When you hit the right (laughs) one, you know who did it. And I just kind of liked that rush that I got of literally going to a restaurant, not knowing anybody, including the staff, and saying, hi, I'm Nathan. I'm going to play songs in the corner. How you doing? And to to win over those rooms was just a rush, kind of like playing a big game, I guess. That's interesting. You're you're the first person that's come on here and kind of compared playing music as a, a mimic to that rush that you feel athletically, and that's yeah. and that's interesting to me. And it's just, I mean, I I went to Tab High School just down the road, and in the mid '90s, and we had a really really good guys I played with. Probably the reason why I got to play Division One ball was because they were so good and made me look good in looking back i think they got me to play high level baseball more than i did but playing like the pitching my junior year in the state championship game that was a huge rush of like four or five thousand people and we were the home team so i threw the first pitch and it was a strike and the umpire and the place goes bananas that's it's almost like you know hitting the end of a good note and a room a bar full of people kind of clap and acknowledge it and put down their beers and sandwiches for a second and clap that's kind of cool so so where are you playing these days what sort of venues are you at sure so um actually tonight billy and i who was here last week billy and i are playing at the triangle just a couple blocks away from here um then tomorrow night i'm at brass cannon at the brewery um and on moortown road and then um saturday evening i'm at center street grill in newtown um next week i'm playing at Ford's, at Murdoch's restaurant at Ford's Colony, I'm, I'm there the fourth Friday of every every <laughs> month. Um, playing, I started playing in Virginia Beach a little bit. I had played last week. I'm going to go back down there um, next week. So uh, then once Barrett's, now that they've opened up the Tap House, I'm playing there at least once a month moving forward. So just kind of all over every place that has live music. I'm um, 
for the most part playing. There's a couple of spots where I just haven't gotten in yet or schedules haven't worked out between what I've already booked, but primarily Williamsburg, occasional, like next month I've got a gig at the Yorktown Pub, which is always fun. Um, so trying to get branch out all my friends in Newport News act like Williamsburg is Richmond. It's so far to drive. <laughs> so I'm trying to get some down in Newport News or Yorktown. So some of my friends from work, because I work at Ferguson, uh, my friends from work can come out to shows. Now, when you're out performing, what sort of music are you playing? Um, well, that's a good question. Uh, I, I kind of purposely don't know how to play your typical bars. Like, I don't know how to play Sweet Home Alabama on purpose. <laughs> and I don't know how to play Margaritaville, and I don't know how to play, like, Sweet Caroline. Because, like, if you want to hear those songs, you can go to three bars and hear those songs 15 times tonight. And so I, the biggest compliment I get is people tell me, you play songs I forgot I liked. Like, I'll play all the songs that you haven't heard in a while. Or even, like, I'll play, like, Avid Brothers and stuff that isn't as popular on mainstream ra radio. Um, and so I just, I play songs that people like, oh, I haven't heard Sundown by Gordon Lightfoot in years, or I haven't heard uh, this song by that in a long time. So it's harder to win over the room that way, but I kind of feel like if you play Sweet Home Alabama, they're cheering for that song. If you play something they've never heard, there's a little bit coming your way too. Like they really like what you're doing. So I make it hard on myself because often just in general, I do that. I like to run uphill both ways, but. <laughs> so, it's uh, safe, so it's safe to say you're not going to any parties and playing Freebird? No, I'm not playing Freebird. <laughs> no, not at all. Yeah. Well, speaking of playing, you're about to play yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. We're going to get into what you're actually playing, but have you performed on radio before? One other time, um, I was on uh, Hunter Hughes does his uh, morning sunrise on Sundays. Um, and actually, I, it's weird. Everything's about Billy, which local music it should be because it should <laughs> Hi, be Billy. Billy and then filter down. But uh, Billy actually sat in with me, and we did a little duo on Hunter's show maybe two summers ago now. All so. right, so we're going to have to get Billy back in here and get you two together, yeah, and you guys can just have a jam session would be awesome. on a future Super Sound Showcase. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I know you want to hear uh, Nathan perform, so we are going to go to one quick commercial break. Stay with us because when we get back, we're going to talk to him a little bit about the song he's going to perform, which is an original, and then he's actually going to perform it. So stay tuned. You are in the Sewer Sound Showcase, sponsored by Retro Daddio here on WMBG. WMBG, we are back in the Super Sound Showcase here on High Power Hits on WMBG. This segment brought to you by Retro Daddio, and I think now is a fine time to break out the first cowbell of the day to Retro Daddio. Shout out to them for sponsoring this segment. So we have Nathan Leonard in studio today. He is going to perform some original music for us. Nathan, uh, tell us a little bit about the song you're going to perform. What's it called? So it's called Living Check to Check. Um, it's a song it actually took a year to write, and the song is about how the sh it can be hard to make it from January to December, and it kind of seemed like... Until I got into that next season or that next quarter, I just couldn't find any words that worked. And then um, as each kind of season progressed, I got another verse. And so uh, I, I recently finished it up November, December of just this last year. So it's fairly new. Now, I'm kind of excited to hear someone come in and perform a song that's taken them a year to perform. Some of our previous artists, they, they write a song like a week in advance. They're like, hey, I'd like, I'd like to sure. try this out on the radio. Right. So right. so at least there's some, uh, some forethought there yeah. on this one. And you had said that you were kind of grappling between this song and another song that you were going to perform yeah, today. Yeah, um, there's another song called The Train Song, which a lot of people um, seem to like. In fact, some people actually start to sing it back when I play out, which is really weird that someone would take the time to remember something I wrote. That's, that's like, got to be thankful. That's got to be a great feeling. It feels very cool. Um, so, uh, but yeah, and the train song was actually written uh, just at Lafayette and Henry Street, where the railroad crossing was. It was an extra long freight train. And I keep a different guitar, one that I don't treat nearly as well as this one, <laughs> in my front seat at all times. So if I'm on 64 and it turns into a parking lot, if I'm at a long red light, if I'm at a train crossing, I put my window down, I stick the neck out, and I play while I'm waiting. And... You might have seen me playing around. So town. you're the person with the guitar hanging out the window. Could be. Uh, I don't know if there's many of us around, but I am one of them <laughs> at least. And so uh, while that train was going by, I tried to emulate the sound of the click-clack of the train. And since I'm so creative, I called it the train song. Well, so. ladies and gentlemen, if you're driving around Williamsburg and you see someone at a stoplight <laughs> with the guitar hanging out, just roll down yeah. your window and be like, Hi, Nathan. Yeah. I heard you on WMBG. You were exactly. great. Exactly. But anyway, enough of this hemming and hawing. People want to hear you perform. So sure. are you ready? Yep. So uh, this is uh, Living Check to Check. I hope you all enjoy it. My transmission's out, my left tire blue. Two foot of snow, my boy's got the flu. Yeah, it's only January. Man, it's been a long year already. Well, we made it past 
last February and March too. Stuck on by old April Fool. Yeah, I guess things are getting better. I can feel a little change in the weather. Time flies by, living check to check. Working for the man and breaking my neck. Put food on the table, shoes on feet. Doing what I gotta do to make ends meet. Yeah. May then June, now summertime's here Beach and barbecues and ice cold beer Hanging out with friends and family Yeah, I got everything I need Time flies by, living check to check Working for the man and breaking my neck Putting food on the table, shoes on feet I'm doing what I gotta do to make ends me Here we go My favorite time of year The leaves are changing color There's a chill in the air Yeah, I got everything I need You know I got everything I need November, December, now New Year's Eve I made it through another by the skin of my teeth Yeah, you know they can't knock me down I'm slow sipping on a double shot of Crown yeah. Time flies by, living check to check Working for the man and breaking my neck Putting food on the table, shoes on feet I'm doing what I gotta do to make ends meet yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. Nathan yeah. Leonard oh here God. in the Super Sound Showcase, brought Thank to you, you by Retro Daddio. Well done, sir. Well Thank done. Thank you very much. Now, if people enjoyed what they heard and they want to find you on social sure. media, how can they do that? Um, so, facebook.com slash Nathan Leonard Music. Again, Leonard spelled a little different, L-I-E-N-A-R-D. Um, Nathan Leonard on Twitter and uh, Instagram, same thing. And uh, again, playing all over town. Uh, get Billy and I are playing tonight at Triangle, so... If you want to hear, hear him add a lot to that song and uh, many others, coming out, we start at 7, go until 10. Well, Nathan, you have been just the latest in a long line of great local musicians coming into our studio and performing. We thank you for your oh, time. I thank you for having me. Again, thank you to Jen at Retro Daddio for making this possible. Hi, for Jen. <laughs> hi, Jen. We, we, we don't like to whisper here. We just like oh. to say, hi, Jen. Hello, Jen. Hi, Jen. We know you're <laughs> listening slash watching. Yes. So thank you again, everybody, for listening. We will have another Super Sound Showcase next Thursday here in High Powered Hits with me, Ty Hodges, and you are listening on WMBG. We are Williamsburg's radio station.